after a thorough cleaning of the transmission pan. Today is all about changing the automatic transmission fluid on our 1985 Porsche 928S. Stay tuned. and thank you for tuning in to the latest installment of Grind Time with Rudy. In this installment, I'm going to take you through what I had to do to change the automatic transmission fluid and filter in Risky Business, our Project 928S. So the car, as far as we know, has about 122,000 miles on it. And similar to the full service I've done a number of videos on, we, we just don't have any maintenance records on the car. The 1985 Porsche 928S, in addition to the 32-valve engine, came standard with a four-speed automatic transmission. Five-speed was optional, but this one, the vast majority of the states uh, came with the automatic. It's actually a modified Mercedes-Benz four-speed transmission from the period. And I say modified in the sense that it's is mounted just ahead of the transaxle, ahead of the rear wheels. Apart from that nuance, the procedure is straightforward. It's a little tricky to fill the reservoir, and I'll show that. So let's watch the video and go from there. So before I do anything else, I want to make sure I can get the drain plug open and not strip it out on the transmission pan itself. So here I am. Luckily, I just use a soft blow hammer to just tap in my Allen wrench because there was still some leftover flu um, grease. So the good news here was um, first impressions were that the transmission fluid looked cleaner than I, much cleaner than I expected. Uh, almost, virtually brand new. So very surprising. Again, no maintenance records, didn't know what I was up against. And the better part was I didn't smell any burnt fluid. So while that was draining, right above my head is the torque converter. And I'm going to take you through, not only is there a drain plug on the black transmission pan, but right above me, that, that silver thing is the torque converter. And you can see just at the bottom of the torque converter, there's air gaps cast into the housing. So there is a drain plug also on the torque converter. So let me show you what I have to do there. So in order to get the drain plug in the correct position, I have to rotate the engine. The 928S 32 valve is an interference motor, so I always have to make, make, make sure I'm turning the engine clockwise. The beauty of having a huge breaker bar like I have here is that I can turn the engine with it without removing the spark plugs. So it's a case of moving the engine a few degrees clockwise and then checking to see if I've got the drain plug centered. So I move it a couple, look, look, not quite yet, keep rotating it and go through this. And obviously this would have been much easier with a, a, a second person there, but, but there you go. In that opening of the housing is there's the bottom of the torque converter with the drain plug. So it's another Allen wrench cap screw. Went ahead and luckily uh, didn't strip. And you, again, you can see quite a bit of fluid in the torque converter as you'd expect. Uh, so it was a little messy because you got to get that out, but then uh, put the cap on, dried it all off, and we were good. So now it's a matter of there's six bolts, and I slowly worked my way around because there's probably going to be fluid in there still, even though I drained it all as much I as I could. I just slowly loosened it, wanted to make sure I'm not bending the pan if there is fluid in it. So what I did here is I'm using a piece of scrap corrugated, and I marked it. So I know I have six holes for the uh, bolts. I always prefer putting the old bolts back into the same holes. I've been in there 36 years as far as I know. It's always better to put them in the same place. So just marked it with um, you know, which side's the passenger side, which side's the driver's side, and, and the locations of the holes of the bolts. So as I was removing them, I just put them in the correct orientation. And then here's the final bolt that I'm taking out. And sure enough, here we go. Because uh, transmission fluid came out. A couple of expletives there. Um, now you'll see here, um, the pan is actually hanging. And I have to take care of a, there's a, I believe it's an air tube that connects to this reservoir. So I needed to make sure, I had, I had to disconnect that. And here I am using some pliers and a screwdriver to get that rubber uh, hose off. 
Now, once I had the pan off, uh, I was quite pleased to see how clean it was inside. But I went through and uh, used my parts washer to clean it out. There was no magnet inside. I did not find any metal shavings. So uh, if there was anything, I I'm very surprised at how clean this fluid was. Now, uh, while I was letting the pan dry, there's three uh, Phillips head screws that hold the filter in and to the, to the valve body. Again, look at how clean that is. No smell, clean fluid. An important point here is you see me in the bottom corner here. Now that I've got the filter replaced, I don't have a shot of that. Since I used the, my parts washer to clean out the pan, I need to flush out I need to flush out any of the remnants of the of the solvent. It's a it's a water-based solvent, but still, you don't want that left over in the transmission pan, mucking up your brand new fluid. So what I did was I used a sacrificial quart of fresh transmission fluid, basically filled up the reservoir and the pan and swirled it around and purged it a couple of times into my uh, drain tank until I was satisfied that uh, no remnants of the solvent were left and then I could go ahead and uh, install everything back in. All right, so, so here I am reinstalling the... Pretty straightforward. Um, make sure you get your bolts in. Just a couple to hold it there. You know, I love having a four-post lift, but it, it's, it is a... Reaching that high at times can be a pain, but I'm, I'm, I'll live with it. And you can see it's a little tricky to get the, the bolts in, as you'd expect, working overhead like this. But once it's in there, I just slowly go around with the gasket on. I don't want to torque one side over another. Um, and then once I get it pretty close to being tight, now you see me coming around with my torque wrench, and it is 76 inch pounds that... Um, converted from six foot pounds I believe as you see here that res white reservoir is where you fill up the transmission fluid this is one of the nuances of heading having the transmission located ahead of the rear axle so how do you fill that well I would call it the auto automotive equivalent of a garden sprayer so you fill it with the desired liquid pump it and the hose you connect to the reservoir and fill it that way so let me take you through that here so in this shot what you're seeing is the reservoir tank and this remote hose that has a, a ball valve on it and an extension and around the rear suspension one of the rear suspension uh, links i just used a couple of zip ties to hold the hose in place while i pump the fluid so here i am I'm going to fill it up and basically like a garden sprayer you slowly fill it up you know, just pumping and filling so fill it up to the brim here we go now Here's where I'm starting it, and watch how quickly in its first start the fluid drops down. So the procedure is start it, let it idle for a couple minutes, and let the initial f fluid go in. So I completed that. So after filling, refilling it again, pump and fill. I'm not going to bore you with that. Um, probably took about five, ten minutes, five or ten minutes to get the capacity back up. Now I'm starting it. You'll see me go through the gears in five second increments. That's what you see me talking, counting off in five. Going through each of the gears, all the way down and back. And you can hear the engine lugging. It's, it's, it's waiting for the fluid, I think, uh, and I'll try and overcome that. And again, it just drained. As I was doing that, it was slowly um, draining the fluid again. So once I did that, uh, filled it up to the correct mark on the, on the reservoir. There's three marks um, based on the temperature. Uh, since the car was not hot at that point, um, the, the, the lowest one, the 60 to 80 degree Fahrenheit marking, uh, is what I filled it back up to. And took it for a quick test drive, and everything seems to be working. I thought I had a leak at first uh, in the reservoir area, but... Um, I'm two days into it, and I think it was just some leftover fluid that had overfilled while I was filling it. And um, I think now that I'm drying it out, uh, fingers are crossed that uh, I don't have a leak there and uh, can go on. Project cost was about $100. Uh, FCP Euro, the transmission filter and pan gasket, was only $13. 
and the transmission fluid was about $70. I went with Valvoline's multi-vehicle synthetic fluid. It does meet that transmission requires Dexron 3 spec from way back in the day. And I'm told that uh, this Valvoline synthetic will work well. These transmissions are, are notoriously hard to shift when they're cold. So by having the synthetic fluid, it'll help lessen the extremes uh, before the transmission actually warms up. So about a $100 project added to the total cost of the Porsche 928 project. A messy job, so now uh, I'm going to have to clean up the mess behind me. Uh, but at least I've got one more uh, check mark off the box on the project. So for, our next, for the next project, we're going to be tackling some oil leaks that are around the engine. So look for that coming very soon. So thanks for watching the video. As always, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this content, press the like button. If you enjoyed this content, press the like button. And if you're enjoying all of the content we post on this YouTube channel, we encourage you to press the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon. Stay safe. <laughs>